Sean Atley in game three for the Ruse. In need of one here. Gonna have to kick at the 50, and that is tight, and I think it may well be there. Snuck in by an inch. Where's the number at the Kangaroos? It's befitting of what they think of him down at Arden Street. Sean Atley. He's had a wonderful first few years of his AFL career and he joins us. Uh, welcome. It's been a great ride for you so far. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, it's been four years now I've been at the club, so it's all going well. But did you didn't come into the system necessarily expecting to play the roles that you played, I suspect, did you? Uh, no, I come in and I was uh, more of a winger to start off in my first year and um, as the years have gone on, I've sort of been down back now. Now, Sean, we want to pick up uh, when you did come in, draft day of 2010. What's your recollection of that week? I've got a vivid rec recollection of phantom drafts suggesting you might have got to the Bombers. Uh, how did it all unfold for you uh, and you end up at North Melbourne, take it a bit later? Yeah, so the week, I think I was at school um, early in the week and then uh, I got flown up to the Gold Coast for the draft on the Thursday night and uh, lucky enough to get my name read out by the Kangaroos, so stayed the night up there and then come back next morning. So. And the speculation about Essendon, it was uh, in every phantom draft, I thought you were heading there and uh, I remember there was even vision on their website the day after that suggested that you were their first draft choice at seven. Did they talk to you in around that? Were, were you seriously considered? I think the, the Brisbane Lions had changed their mind on HEP, I believe, at the last minute and so that all of a sudden it cascaded down, the changes were made. Did they talk to you the day before um, in that period? Yeah, they did, but I spoke to a lot of clubs um, during up there in the draft, and I suppose you never really know where you're going to end up until they actually read your, your name out. But, um, yeah, I couldn't be happier ending up at the Kangaroos. And I think that's the Kangaroos' view too at the end of it all. They were absolutely wrapped. Couldn't believe that you slipped through so far after being touted and, such a, an early choice. And it was Pollock, wasn't it? Brisbane went for instead? Yes, it was. So, and it did take a little while. He's now playing some great footy there at Port. So. Yeah, yep, the way it turned out. So uh, decisions aren't made until the names are called. So that's an issue for yeah, everyone. Uh, we're certainly very happy with, uh, with the pick of Sean Atley. And Hutchie, the other thing that comes with that is so many clubs lock in to who they were going to pick that uh, Sean ended up falling a lot further down the tree than what uh, anyone would have ever expected. Then you finally arrive on the scene and you start playing AFL football, uh, Sean, and we're just going to have a look at some of your highlights packages here at the moment. Tell the, uh, the kids that are coming through the TAC Cup at the moment uh, what it's like to get to a footy club and how it is playing against men versus playing in the TAC. Yeah, so probably the biggest thing I found was uh, the training load when you get down there. Um, I come from Ben at the Bushies, we train once a week and you get to North and you're training every day. So um, once you get used to that load, uh, definitely gets a lot easier. The one thing that we notice with your highlights package is uh, every player I think needs to have a weapon. Yours seems to be your speed, your run and carry. Yeah, no, um, Brad's good on that, Boomer's good on that. They encourage me to, uh, to use my pace, which is what I'm good at and which is what allows me to get a game at the club. And that's probably why he's playing a lot at half-back now too, Plough, because um, you know, we need that drive off half-back and he, he's one that can break the line and penetrate to forward 50 from a half-back. Uh, tell us about um, a little bit of fun now, mate. Your buried treasure, it's on the website. The kangaroo fans would know about it, but not everyone else would know about it. Yeah, so uh, on the North website, myself and uh, my housemate Jamie McMillan uh, run a bit of a blog on the website, which is just uh, uncovering some of the Oh, our teammates um, <laughs> behind the scenes stuff. So. I think we've got some a couple of uh, vision things here, a couple of pictures. There's yeah. a couple of our boys, isn't it, holding hands? A couple or... holding What's hands. Going on there? <laughs> uh, a bit, bit suspect friendly. those two, yeah. So no, they live the, together. These are the photos that slipped through, and um, Sean and Jamie picked this out. There's another Tim McGuinness wearing lipstick, which yeah. is. Uh, sort of show you running the... down there, Bert. <laughs> 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 I'm not, I actually didn't see that one. I'm not sure how that slipped through, but no. uh, these are the boys. They've got their finger on the pulse, Hutchie, and uh, they're good at it. So you're a frustrated journalist, are you, Sean? Uh, I don't yeah. think so, no. Just a bit of, <laughs> bit of fun, that is. Well, then. Now, we're going to have a look back at your journey through the Murray Bushies, a boy from Corriong, but you had a very unusual introduction to us as you were picked in the, uh, the NAB AFL Academy, and we looked back to your junior club, and, and at one stage they suggested you had about eight junior clubs. Tell us the story of your father's sojourn up the east coast of Australia in your 16th year. Yeah, so when I was 16, we uh, went on a couple of month holiday up to Cairns, and uh, I sort of needed to get a bit of footy in still, so we, uh, we stopped along the way at towns and just asked to play footy really and they, they were good so we stopped at Yapoon and Harvey Bay and all these little towns on the way up and it was a bit of a journey but no it was good fun to look back on it. And now. so they yeah. are claiming our transfer fees yeah. by the way, all of those clubs along the way <laughs> for you. Yeah. Put my hand up so we had a... Well uh, I think we'll go back to the Murray that might end up getting the dough but uh, I think the boys at Cairns would be pretty happy. You played two or three games there yeah, at Cairns. Yeah I spent three weeks up there so I, st I still talk to one or two of the boys up there yeah. now. So. Hang on, are they entitled to the money or not? 
Well, they get spread over the five years uh, before you were drafted, the clubs you spent the time at. So there might be a claim there about a, a about, third of a year. Yeah, about fifteen dollars each. Yeah. Yeah. Shifter, I'd love to be the coach uh, of Cairns, and all of a sudden this young bloke comes in and sort of has a little bit of a kick around. I think you'd be put it up your hand and say, yeah, you're yeah. all right, you can play on the weekend. <laughs> if future AFL just walks off the streets, I'm in town yeah. for a couple of weeks, can I, can I come and play? <laughs> and of course, you then emerge as a star for Vic Country. Tell us about a boy from the bush sort of mixing against the best young players around the nation in national championships. Who are some of the boys you played with, some of the influences at the time? Yeah, so we had a pretty good team, uh, my underage year. We had Luke Parker, Dyson Heppel, Tom Lynch, to name a few, and we ended up winning it um, this year. So there's John O'Segler in the ruck there, another Bushies boy. And uh, later today we'll announce the, uh, the NAB AFL Cat Academy, as it's called now, and uh, you come through that as well, Sean. And we've got a, uh, a picture here maybe of one of your assistants. Uh, uh, what do you recall of being in that program? Yeah, that seems like a long time ago. I'm, yeah, Nathan Buckley was there and uh, we went over to South Africa and spent a couple of weeks over there, which was eye-opening. But um, yeah, that was a great experience being in the academy there. And you've started your own business, your own photo booth business. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, so me and J-Mac have uh, started a photo booth business. It's called Jack in a Booth. Um, so we, uh, we hire it out to people, to weddings, parties, whatever, and take yeah, a few photos the like is this. That you with the sunnies on? Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> me and J-Mac. Yeah, a few of the boys got in there the other day, so it's going pretty well. So how do, how do we get involved? How do people book you for this? Yeah, so we've got a website, www.jackinabooth.com.au, and uh, just go on there and have a look around and book us out. I love the entrepreneurial spirit down there, Boomer. Too good, mate. You've taken all the money. I've got to make a buck yeah, on the side. Yeah, taking it out the side, not from the footy. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, as we thank you for coming in. Good luck for the finals. No it's going to be an exciting ride. You've, uh, I guess, officially made it as of yesterday. So, well done and good luck for the next six weeks ahead. Hopefully. No worries. Thanks for having me. Sean Atley joining us.